All right, this is a video that's going to go over all the new enhancements that we've recently added to the Counterpunch calculator. Make sure you view the original calculator videos first. In this video, I'm going to be going over all the new inputs and tools that we've added. Uh, it has had quite a facelift, to say the least, and the functionality and what this calculator can do is has really uh, advanced the effectiveness of the counterpunch and given us just so much more opportunity, greater versatility. The counterpunch works on so many additional charts and time frames now. Charts and time frames we probably would not have even thought of trading uh, prior to this vast improvement. So let's just jump right into it. And as I go through these examples, I'm going to show you some of the new and exciting trade plans that are going to be hitting the Owners Club. Uh, some of them are still being tested. Most of them are in their finishing stages, and now it's just a matter of letting them season. In other words, play out for a bit, make sure that they hold up and continue to perform well. Most of them are. So we'll look at this particular plan first, but you'll find this on the Owners Club uh, in the not-too-distant future. This is Natural Gas Futures. And we'll look at some others. The first thing I want to call your attention to, and this is a major, major improvement. It's so big we put it right at the top of the calculator. And that is the ability to flip on trend mode. As you have learned from your counterpunch training, there are two methods of using the counterpunch, the standard method and the trend following method. So we're just going to refer to them as modes, standard mode and trend mode. The trend mode follows a moving average. It's actually a simple moving average and we've added some directional elements to it so that when it's up it's blue or green whatever color you choose and when it's down it's red. When it's in trend mode the directional indicator has to agree with the trade otherwise the trade is filtered out. Now you can quickly toggle it on and off by merely setting it to true or false. When you see a trade that sets up that's in trend mode and is against the trend, it's going to look different. The counterpunch is going to actually look a lot different than what you're used to. So let me show you an example. So let's look at this trade plan for natural gas. Notice you have a setup here that's long and it's against the directional indicator. The trade shows up as gray. The calculator is going to show you the trade, but notice how the calculator stayed with the purple trade. You can see the trailer coming down and did not stop and reverse. That's because this is not a valid setup because it's going against the directional indicator. So what would happen if the directional indicator happened to change? Here's another long trade. Notice that it's gray and it's against the directional, so it doesn't count. But then the directional turns up. Notice that the trade shows up again. The calculator literally is going to track this gray trade and then give you a chance to get in sync with the entry. So when the price pulls back and hits this entry, you can get long. It's kind of strange to see an entry that's in the middle of a bar or below a bar, but that's the whole reason why we show you the original trade in gray so that you can refer back to it. Notice the targets are identical, and when this trade actually pulls down, it triggers in, the directional then turns red, but it's already too late because on the bar before, the directional was still up. Remember, it's always based on the close of the bar. And so when that bar closed, the directional closed higher. And you could confirm that by looking in the data window. Notice that it's at 896. On the next bar, it's at 897. Then intrabar comes down, hits the entry and that counts and then notice how it comes all the way up and it does end up hitting target one you see so that's how the directional indicator works and that's how the other filters work as well the other filters are also going to work the same with a few slight differences which I'll explain once we get there the next setting actually lets you change the length of the directional we usually use a 20 as our default but with this particular chart the 233 natural gas chart 16 tested better so I chose to go with 16 remember if you change the setting in the calculator you also have to change the setting on the actual indicator that shows up on your chart they're not connected the one on your chart is actually just a visual aid for you 
the actual directional that the calculator uses is hardwired into the code. All right, next up, we actually added a whole new type of entry, a different style of entry. When the counterpunch first came out, we could set how many ticks above or below the setup bar for the entry. We now added a new method. This is called the incremental entry, and you could set it to true or false. This is more dynamic. This entry is going to adjust. The actual breakout will adjust based on market volatility. Okay, the incremental is much like an average true range. So what it does is it will use the incremental multiplier. It, it multiplies this number by what the reading is of the incremental indicator. You don't need to put the incremental indicator on your chart. It's hardwired into the calculator. You can certainly change the multiplier. If you get into the automation, you'll be able to test for what the best settings are. And of course, I've already done that with many of these trade plans. Sometimes we won't use the incremental entry, but other times we will. It just depends. We could also change the length of the incremental. Okay, 14 is the default. But this has made a lot of trade plans that would not have been very good actually come alive and become great. For example, this new trade plan for the DAX. This plan has been developed to trade during the U.S. session. You wouldn't know it based on this last little piece of this chart here, but just over the last 10 trades, it's won 90%. It's only had one loser with a five-point profit factor. You'll notice I'm using the incremental entry, and it's set to 0.75, which pushes the entry further out asking for more confirmation, but because I'm using entry-based targets, the targets are calculated on where the actual entry is and not the high of the setup bar or the low of the setup bar. So the targets are further out as well, and this made a big difference. Okay, let's just go down the list. If you know what the stop offset is, but what about this, a stop and reverse adjustment tool? This is fantastic. It's set to zero on this chart, but on other trade plans, it makes a real difference. And what this says is, if there is a stop and reverse, push the entry of the new trade, which of course would then be the stop of the trade you're in, push that further away. If this was set to two, the stop and reverse point would move two ticks lower or higher, depending on the direction, right? So it adjusts, and this is really great for testing. So again, if you decide to go into the trade assist and the automation, you'll be able to test for the best adjustment level for stop and reversals. It just so happened on the DAX, it's zero, and there are some reasons why, but on other trade plans, you're going to notice that that stop and reversal adjustment is very useful. All right, just focusing on the new stuff, let's look at the targets. All right, so you'll notice that you still have your target one, target two, and target three, but you've also now have three additional settings, minimum target one ticks, minimum target two ticks, and minimum target three ticks. This lets you set a fixed level. So it could be, uh, for example, target one is 0.9x. If I put a 10 in there, it would be, it would be 0.9x or 10 ticks whichever is greater. So if 0.9 is more than 10 ticks, that's where the target will be. But if it's less than 10 ticks, the target's going to default to 10 ticks. So you can make this a zero even, okay, and or a, or a 0.1, whatever. And the, the, the target one will always be 10 ticks. So you might want to go to a fixed target Remember, the calculator is going to exit at target two unless you tell it otherwise. The, the first position, the primary position, is going to exit at target two. In this case, it's a two and a half X. But what if I wanted to exit instead at 15 ticks on every single trade? You can do it like that. Or what if I want to exit at 15 ticks or the two and a half X, whichever is furthest away? Okay? So this gives you extra target controls. All right, and then you have one for target one, target two, and target three. You also have this really cool tool that tells the calculator to ignore trades if target three is just too close, if it's too small. And this works with a lot of Forex charts. 
So for example, on this Euro US chart, ignore small setups T3 means that if target three is less than 10 pips away, 100 ticks, the trade won't even show up. If you want it to show up, you would have to set it to zero. If target three is less than 10 pips, hopefully you're not going to want to take that trade because after spread, you're hardly going to make anything. It's not worth it. So this is a pretty useful feature, and it's good with futures also. We've also added a little bit more on our money management. You know about how to set it to true and how many ticks to lock in. In this setting here, it's it's similar to the fixed targets. It's a, it's a certain criteria that if it's not met, then it won't lock in profit. In other words, if this is set to true, when target one is hit, it's going to lock in one pip. But... It also has to go 12 pips or 120 ticks. So it has to hit target one and go 12 pips. The difference between this and the targets is that this isn't going to move the target. This is going to keep the target in the original position based on the multiplier, but it's also then going to require an additional condition before locking in its money management. Okay? And of course, the big trade protect, you already know, this means that if it go on a big trade, if it goes X amount of pips, let's just say 40, but target one is more than 40 pips away, then this will start to lock in. It'll start to protect your profit. So in this case, it has to go 40 pips or hit target one, whichever comes first. So this is or, right? This is and. It has to hit target one and have gone 12 pips. That's the difference between these two settings. And, and the same is true for the trailer. Works exactly the same way. But with the trailer, we added a very important feature. And this has opened up again a whole new level of flexibility for us and has really improved things. You can now tell the trailer when to activate. So if you, if you have it at 1, that means it's going to activate at 1x. This multiplier is separate from the actual target multipliers. So 1x, 1 times the trade setup, okay, the way that it's taught in basic training. If you want it to be at 1.5x, you'd have to put 1.5. If you want it to be at the second target, you'd have to look and see where the second target actually is. In this case, it's at 2 and then you would set that to two. So it's completely independent of the targets. I usually use 1x as a default and then test from there. And that group of new inputs is very powerful. So let's just go down a little further and let me show you what else we've added down here at the bottom. Two very important filters. The chop filter, you can turn it on or off. And this is really great and when I'm learning and what we've learned with the automation is that the chop filter truly does make a difference. You'll notice most of the time when you turn it off, the results go down. So we typically leave it on. There are some occasions when you don't need it. There are other occasions when you can change the length of the chop indicator, but 20 seems to be the best setting in most cases. Okay, and then this filter here is really great too. This is the squeeze filter. The chop filter acts a lot like the trend filter. It'll show you the trade as a gray trade, and then if it comes out a chop, it'll let you get in sync and take the trade. And that's really effective because that leads to big moves. Usually when it comes out, the price comes out a chop, it could explode in one direction or another. It may go one way and it's a false breakout, in which case you look for the trade in the opposite direction it can be a very good trade. But the squeeze filter is very different. That's when you're squeezing between the two EMAs when the 50 is pinching towards the 200. The trade setups that are inside of that zone against the 50 are just filtered out. And then there's a really great nuance setup. This is for fine tuning, and it's the squeeze tolerance ticks setting. So this means that if there's a setup that's X amount of ticks outside of the squeeze zone, it will also get filtered out. And this will protect you against wicks. You might have a, a trade that's actually going in the direction of the 50 EMA as it's squeezing towards the 200, but it has wicks that are stabbing through, and this might happen often with a particular chart. You can set the tolerance beyond the 50 EMA. 
So if it's two ticks beyond any setup that is inside the squeeze zone or two ticks beyond the 50 EMA of the squeeze zone will also get filtered out. And this is a very useful tool as well. Another thing about the squeeze zone filter is that it only works when the 50 EMA comes between the entry and the targets. In other words, if the target, if target one is beyond the 50 EMA and there's room inside of the squeeze to actually move up to a target, then the filter is going to let that trade play out. It's going to show you that trade. Let's look at this example of the Euro US. This is in standard mode. And notice I turn the chop filter off for the sake of this demonstration. And the squeeze zone filter is on. Okay? So you'll notice that these setups are above the 50 EMA. So you see them. They're good, right? Those count. This setup is inside the squeeze zone and it's grayed out. All right, so now look what happens when I add the tolerance. Let's first look at this. This, is, uh, this entry is at 1416 and the EMA is at 1411. All right, so I'm going to put a 7 pip tolerance in here just to show you what happens. Okay, so we'll go to the squeeze tolerance. Let's go, let's go 80 just to make sure, an 8 pip tolerance, and then watch what happens. That trade disappears, you see? It's no longer valid because it's outside of the squeeze zone by the same amount as the tolerance input, okay? And you notice that the other setups over here went away as well. If you turn the squeeze filter off, All of a sudden, these trades come back. You see? And this is a real powerful setting because usually when the 50 is pinching down to the 200, you want to go short, not long. Notice this trade showed up as well. Okay, because the odds are you're going to catch a nice move to the downside. You don't want to be wiggled in the long trade. So the squeeze filter is very useful, and so is the tolerance setting. It's hard to know what the best tolerance setting is, so I would start with either 0 or do something like 2, 2 ticks or 2 pips and see how you like it. And then, of course, again, with the automation, it's something you could test for. All right? All right, so we're almost done here. We also have the ability to turn on the third target. And so this is a fixed position to the third target, and the calculator will now track it. And then you could also turn the trailer on or off, okay? Or maybe you don't want to go to any fixed target. You just want to trail. Then you would turn off fixed position, turn off target three, and now all you have is a trade plan that's going to do nothing but trail, okay? If you turn off the trailer and turn on use fixed position, it's going to assume you're going to target two. If you turn on target three... It's going to assume two positions, one to target two, one to target three, but no trailer. All right, so hopefully you can kind of figure out where this is going. You cannot turn target three on and trail and turn off target two. The only way to do that would be to go back to your targets and just make sure that target two and target three are at the same level. Okay, so you can do it. It's just you have to do it from up here. You might say, let's put target 2 at 2.5, and then that would be where your fixed target exits, like so. Okay, so there's a way to do it, but you just have to know how to do it, and that's, that's how. All right, and the key levels are the same as, as what the other video shows, and that's basically it. Those are the new tools in the calculator. There are additional tools in the trade assist and the automation tools where you can test time of day, start and stop, and where you can test power of quitting formulas, different types of power of quitting criteria, amongst other things. But the trade assist training happens inside of the advanced training boot camp. So if you're interested in that, that's something you'd have to sign up for. Otherwise, you now have the new and improved counterpunch trader calculator and you're going to also be receiving a lot of new great trade plans that utilize a lot of the tools that I just showed you.